The British who used to run this country are known as a nation of shopkeepers, and that may be their biggest legacy. Ghana is a nation of traders, hawkers and store owners. Everyone seems to be selling something. Most make just enough to get by. The minimum wage here is around $1.50 a day. But 15 years of peace in a troubled region has laid the groundwork for economic growth its African neighbours can only envy. GDP grew last year by nearly 7%. One measure of stability and business confidence is of course how that country's stock market's doing. And Ghana's is doing very well, thank you very much. In fact, its market is the best performing in Africa this year. This is the brand new Ghana Stock Exchange in downtown Accra. It's still under wraps, about to be launched. While most markets around the world have plunged by large double-digit figures, Ghana's has risen by 60%. Ghana is a very stable country, uh, peaceful. Uh, if you look at it from sub-Saharan sub African context, um, we have a democratic system. People find here very uh, safe. So the political risk is low. Then when it comes to the companies themselves that are listed, some of them have done extremely well as a result of the political climate and economic uh, climate. And all of those reflected in the share prices. Future years of economic growth are dependent on the smooth election handover because there are few things the business community fear more than uncertainty. Recent disputed results in Kenya and Zambia have led to unrest, but observers say they're optimistic here. Oh, we trust that this is a mature enough society to go through these elections. Uh, we are confident that it will not destabilize the country. Quite the opposite. It will uh, hopefully consolidate the spirit of, of openness uh, that Ghana represents. Investors looking for business opportunities are focusing on Ghana because it's considered safe and, of course, because of its rising GDP. One downside of economic growth is a rise in diseases associated with the West, like diabetes. So the urban population is being urged to go for accurate checkups. Until recently, the equipment and trained staff wasn't there. It is now. This cutting-edge medical diagnosis lab is considered a showcase, the result of a joint venture between a Ghanaian doctor, stroke businessman, and a South African medical company. Our educational system is good, the workforce is trainable, and you need those things to when you are making an investment of this high-tech nature. But you're still going to go through a little bit of um, bureaucratic next that you need to overcome. But compared to the other countries in the sub-region, I think Ghana is uh, much better. This young Belgian businessman runs palm oil plantations in Ghana and he hops from one to the other in a small beach aircraft. His company has just taken out a $13 million loan to invest in new palm trees and land. The end product distilled from this fruit is for cooking oil or soap. It takes about seven years to break even on each new investment. It's a sign of confidence because there's no way the company would have taken out such a large loan if it thought this country could descend into strife or civil war like its neighbours. We think that this project involves about 50,000 people just by being here. We uh, are very happy that Ghana has become a very stable country in, in this uh, region and uh, we are hoping that the elections this year will also give another four years of stability for us. Of course, Ghana is not immune to the global recession. More expensive raw material imports will have a knock-on effect here, and Ghanaian migrants working in Europe and who send money back to their families are seeing work opportunities dry up. But as long as Ghana remains a democratic role model in the region, it should remain an attractive magnet for the business community.